So let's talk about Melodyne 5 and how it's come a long way. In the beginning, Melodyne, I think I had my first copy of Melodyne well over 10 years ago. It was pretty hard to understand. And um, it was a very sophisticated piece of software, a powerful, but again, very few good tutorials. And it was a bit on the technical side and it had a bunch of, uh, its interface was different and it was frankly a little bit hard to understand and use in a musical way. Um, but time had progressed and uh, it's been updated. A lot more videos on teaching people how to use it. And it's become a lot more user friendly and friendly to the artist. And with this latest update, uh, the amount of options you have to work with audio is really quite amazing. So in this video, we're going to concentrate on one part of Melodyne and its chord track. And let's just get going with one idea of how it can be a very powerful and useful way and perhaps become your main chord track uh, tool. We know that DAWs have chord tracks, but this is like a super powerful chord track. So you may want to consider this type of workflow. Um, if your DAW has the uh, audio or the uh, audio random access ARA option, such as uh, Cubase or Studio One, and perhaps others have it now, you'll be able to closely work with audio and your DAW together in real simpler, a lot faster and easier ways. So let's just demonstrate some of that here. If we have say a drum track and um, let's pick a drum track with you know maybe 120 beats per minute or maybe 100 beats per minute I got my DAW set at 100 beats per minute let's grab this alright so if we double click that will bring it into your DAW and if we click on that musical event or that audio clip we get these, this extension button up here. If we click on it, we have a Melodyne option. So our audio random access uh, system up here button. And if I click Melodyne, it will bring it right into Melodyne and we'll be able to use it immediately. But one thing I want to mention before is if you do decide you want to work with more than one clip of this drum track, say you want to drag out three of them and then you select them and you glue them all together you may run into the issue where now you click on that audio event and it's simply the same audio but just been glued together why don't I get the random access Melodyne option anymore uh, because I believe it's got to be one so it has to be one piece of audio recorded as one piece so if you're working with loops and Melodyne and you're wondering why, you know, what's up with that, that's probably the reason, but there's a simple fix. You could go up here. One way to fix it would be to render in place. So we're simply going to re-render that as one longer drum loop. So we get rid of the old one. We drag up the new one that's rendered in one piece. And we get rid of that track and now we're back to where we started and we click on it and we do get the Melodyne option we click on Melodyne now and it'll analyze this as a percussive uh, audio loop as you can see in algorithms it's check marked by percussive so Melodyne understands that this is a you know a rhythmic uh, track here Now we can work on this uh, loop in Cubase as normal. We have all the Cubase options, or we can have also all the Melodyne options. So it's great. Um, it's just that fast, and we see the track here in the track list, and we can highlight it as being active with this little button, or put it in the background and work with other tracks with these two buttons. And if you want to zoom in, and instead of trying to zoom in by this bar down here and trying to, you know, get it all set up, just double click on the horizontal bar, and double click on the vertical bar, and that will bring it zoomed in nicely automatically. And it will loop just like it loops in Cubase. 
So in the next section, we'll start looking at how we can uh, work with and make musical ideas together on multiple tracks. So now that we've dragged in this first bit audio clip, this drum loop, we've basically told uh, Melodyne Studio that uh, we want to, you know, this is the timing we want for our session. So everything else I drag in is going to adhere to this, this groove set up here, this template of timing. So now is the time to change timing, so to speak, if you want to. And there's so many different ways you could change this, this uh, little drum groove. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because there's so many tools here. You have not just pitch, format, amplitude, uh, you have timing and it's uh, different uh, tool, transition tools. So as a quick example though, let's just say, okay, if we play it, you can see every bit play and you can select every different portion, every hit. And so say the initial hit is a little too strong and loud. You could use, you know, your basic tools that you've had, you know, in the past. So a little change just how strong in amplitude the initial hit it, and you could play it again. But that's really just changing audio up and down, how loud it is, and that's not much control. But if we undo that, we can see a new tool here with the fade tool. So we can fade it in. We have the ability to fade in that first hit, the attack on it. We can keep some of the attack, but just soften the initial attack by just a little bit. If we play it again. So now it's not such a sharp initial attack. If we undo that, we could also do, we could grab that initial hit on that crash and dampen it. Believe it or not, you could actually just dampen that hit by dragging out that uh, fade tool in the, the opposite direction. So now, let's play it again. And now that initial crash still sounds with the same original attack, but is quickly kind of dampened if though you put your finger on that symbol a little bit. Let's take it from the beginning. You see the difference there? It's as if though you took your finger and dampened that initial crash. So that's a lot of control on a per hit basis, right? And then of course, if we undo that, we have our timing tools, the incredible timing tools of Melodyne. And just as an example, we have this first bit selected. If I drag the timing tool, you'll see it just jump in big chunks of timing. But if I want more minute control over that, I just hold down the Alt key and I get very small, the ability to control the timing a lot better. So if I want that first hit detached from the second hit, not only did I dampen it, have the ability to dampen it, but I can have it end just a little bit quicker and detach it from the next hit, so separate it. So start again. So we can undo that. And we have other timing tools. Um, and they, they operate in different ways depending on what you have selected. So if you have just one thing selected here, it will, it will operate in one way. As a better example is the attack speed tool. So this is a great tool for the attack. So again, we had a few different ways to change the attack just by loudness, by dampening and fading. And now we can do, you know, just uh, manipulate the attack of this first hit. So if I drag down on that little handle, the attack handle, you can see the attack just changing. So we're totally just have control over the attack portion. And so we want a, a longer, stronger attack. We drag it down. We play from the start. And that's too heavy. It's just too much. But if we want it just a little bit, so if we go back to where we started, way back before any manipulation here. And now we just make it a little bit stronger. And if we want it lighter, attack just a little bit too much, we go back. 
even lighter. Change that attack a little bit more. And we could do the same thing on the next hit. We can change how that sound is going to occur. And pretty fine detail too. So you have a lot of control there. If we can get back to where we started, something around there. So uh, that I just wanted to point out when you first drag something into Melodyne, and in this case it's the rhythm that's going to affect, you know, it's basically setting up our session and going to control the the rhythm of our session. So we want to make sure we got that just right with all our different timing tools and, you know. But say we got that to where we want it, and again, just play it. Now we can immediately start to drag in other things. Even though Melodyne at this point, it says C major up here, but it really doesn't have any pitch information. It's just, it brought it in under the algorithm of percussive. So it's just timing really right now. And that's what we want. We just, we want, we have our first loop as our timing. So now we go back here and we can say, okay, let's take from a different library recorded maybe halfway around the world in a different studio, we pick a, a bass guitarist and let's say, uh, let's see, where are we here? Indie Rock, Butterfly, there's one at, okay, 110. So even though it's recorded at 110 BPM, it's F sharp. So we do have pitch information now. And it will, uh, you know, Melodyne can handle that 10 BPM difference. So let's drag this into Cubase, double click. So now we have a bass guitar from a, who knows, you know, different studio, different time, different place. And let's bring it in to, so we select that track, that event, and we go and say, yeah, bring it into our Melodyne session. And now we have two tracks in Melodyne. And again, to see the bass, you should double click here and here, the vertical and horizontal. So now it's zoomed in on that bit of audio that was just brought in. And the drum tracks are way in the back and we could see them grayed out. These are the buttons that determine what you're looking at and what you're operating on at the time. So I want my drums in the background grayed out. So on my drum track, I use the grayed out button and in the forefront, I'm working, I want the yellow to be on the new bass. So how do I see my drums in the background? You could try to hit this button again, but if it's not, you can select both tracks and then hit the vertical and it should bring the drums in up at the top there. And if it's still not doing it, make them both active. So select both, make them active in the foreground. Now double click on this vertical and you'll see your drums in the background as reference. Now I can make them go grayed out and I can make my foreground. So I'm working on this, but I can still see my drums in the background. So let's play them both together now. Now this bass will have taken on the uh, timing of the drum track. So the bass should be adhering to the rhythm track. So let's see how that sounds. Now, pretty much it is, and if you just want to make sure it is, select that bass track, go to your timing tools, and just double click, and you'll see them shift in time a little bit. Now it's basically quantized more to the, the groove of your drums. So go back to selection tool, and play it again from the top. All right, so in the next section, we'll go into the bass groove now and we're going to change things up. We're gonna be able to talk to our bass player now. So now we got our bass a little bit in line with the timing. Uh, Melodyne knows the timing that we want for this session. 
Now let's tell it that we want to, we like this bass and I want to use the chord changes in the bass to determine what my session chord changes are going to be. So in essence, I've decided that, you know, I want to use my drums timing, I want to use the chord changes from the bass, and then I want to bring in a bunch of different guitar loops from who knows where to uh, be part of this session. So that's kind of what we're looking at with this kind of super um, capable chord track system here. So first of all we got to know what chord changes are in this bass loop. So if I go back to my selection tool and I look up here these two buttons turn them on and off and again we're in Melodyne Studio so we have all of the options available. This is for the show the keys and this is for showing the chord track. So we turn them both on and so we know it's it's saying that it's B minor. Um, if we go to right click on here and say analyze the chords of this bass, we see that indeed it's F sharp is the first chord here, then it goes to a B, then it goes to an A. So the chord changes of the bass are, if we play it, it's going from F sharp to a B minor to an A. All right, so that's very valuable information. So um, if we now uh, turn on the drums, so if we unmute the drums up here, and in Cubase you can mute and unmute, of course, so. All right, so we got that working together. Now, if I want to bring in a guitar, I could, um, to play with this, I have the information I need. I have the beats per minute and I have the, uh, um, all the chord change information. And it's all on a grid. So the grid I set up to, if I right click on there, I can say, okay, I want this grid to show the chords and the scale, and it is. And anything that I double click on it will click into that grid of chord and scale to match my chord changes and the scale of what I'm working in here. So that's great. That's really powerful. So that's where we want to be. Now, I can also say, since we have all that information in our super chord track here, I can say to my uh, bass player, okay, I want a little bit more movement in this bass line here. It just goes da 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 I want a little bit more movement to the next bar up here to the the chord change to the B minor so I want some movement up there so I'm gonna take this chunk and I'm gonna go into pitch mode here and I'm just gonna say yeah let's let's move that up there and I'm gonna have a little bit of movement there so now we should go back and listen to it for reference before we would do something like that let's just listen for reference So that's the way it sounds now. And now let's just change it. And see how that goes. I might even just go like that. So just, I mean, now you can have so many options to see something, to come up with a musical way of playing this. I may say that, okay, I want that even more, I want the chord change to be even more emphasized. So let's go back and try that. That doesn't sound that good. Let's now we have format, we have the ability to change format too. So format, so we may just go to that tool and change that a little bit. Let's try that. Not bad, let's change that a little bit more. So you would mess around with all these different tools till you had something that musically sounded great, but you're able to tell your bass player, you know, to change things and have some radical changes. So we could say instead of it, we could take this note and just 
you know, say overall we want more movement in the second bar. And again, say we want some movement to the next bar up there, and you're just... And again, if the format's off, format, we could just mess with that, and you can kind of tune your new note in different ways until you... change that too but there there are tools to change almost any part of what you've just changed to make it sound more musical and work so So once you get your bass working and you've told your bass player, you know, you want him to be more active, to have more movement in his playing, that's great. You just play everything together and it's starting to work for you. I mean, that's immensely uh, powerful just to be able to do that. And again, you would take the time to use all these tools. The transition can be changed. You can tighten up how that note transfers to the next note. You can make the attack harder or sharper. Anything here that you may, you may say to yourself, well, that doesn't sound that good, that transition. You can change that and edit it with so many different tools in and so many different parts and aspects of this this audio how it transfers to the next note how it leads in so i mean you have a lot of tools to change your bass performance and that is great but now we want to add a guitar player from a whole different world so we may want to take uh, some guitar from you know some totally uh, you know platinum guitars right and say we want an acoustic guitar, so let's try to find one somewhere around the right tempo. 125 should still work. We'll go 110, maybe one, uh, 105. Doesn't matter what key it is, but. So here's something that is in the key of A tempo of 105 and it's a guitar part and it's it's recorded somewhere and in some other studio different part of the world has nothing to do with this performance we're working on is it even possible to get some of that musical inspiration from here into this session and make it work let's try so let's double click on that and now we have the guitar part and we click on that and we get the option to move it into Melodyne and now Melodyne will bring it into the session and it's in the forefront and it's zoomed in nicely and let's see what it sounds or let's hear what it sounds like just by default just by bringing it in before the timing and the uh, pitch changes <laughs> So you can see that it's since the gray parts of this grid are off the key or the uh, the chord changes and the key. So we know that it's not in the correct pitches for what we want and it's not in the correct timing. So let's select all that and make sure we got it all. That should be all of it. Now let's just do some timing quickly. We're just going to adjust it and it did. It quickly snapped into a somewhat usable and we can change this remember any part of this can be changed so we can have the timing just right you're not limited um, so now let's hear it uh, let's do a pitch change so we're gonna we have everything selected and we're gonna double click with the pitch selector selected here and it'll pop into the right scale 
So now the timing and the scale uh, pitches are more correct according to what we're playing here. It should s sound somewhat better, even though we haven't manually moved anything yet. Let's go to the beginning. Now we can go further. We can say, okay, I want the bass. We want both the bass and the new guitar to be active. And so we can see them together. So we double click having selected both of them. They're both in the forefront. So we can uh, change both of them at the same time. Or we can just have the bass grayed out and that in the forefront. So again, we're working on the guitar now that's active. The bass is down here and that's a guide and the drums are up there. So we can say that, okay, I see the bass um, way down here. And we can see that the bass, if we were to zoom in a little bit more, we could see that, okay, it's F sharp. Now, if we go to an F sharp one or two octaves higher, that should give us a clue on how to get this guitar to sound even better to what we're starting with here. So. Instead of an A, even though the A might be in the scale, let's take that A down to the F sharp here. So select it and drag it. So now the A has gone to an F sharp, and maybe we want this next. Let's just play that and listen to it. So basically what we have the option to do now is even though we one click them all into this basic scale of what our bass was, we now can fine tune it to even work better to what where our bass is. So we may want this note. We want it to stick closer to an octaves higher to the bass note, root of the note of our bass. So without changing too much of its performance. So we can say that we want some of these notes to conform to this, which is, um, if we look closely here, that's the B minor. So the B minor up here, we could change this. We drag that down to the B minor. And, and let's say this, we want to, to conform mainly to the F sharp here. So an F sharp up here here would be, so we could maybe try, try that and that and see how that sounds. So basically we're going to tell it more specifically to adhere to some of the root notes from our bass line. So let's go back. So even though we've just begun here, you can see that we've taken this a ways to making it start to work. And with all the tools, you could make this guitar player actually somewhat begin to melt into this session. And we just play from the beginning. And if we continue to work with it, so let's say uh, we go to the A sharp note here. So we want A sharp a few octaves up. So A sharp is on. So I'm going to move this. Let's go to that A sharp up there. What note is this? No, that's an A. So we want that to the A. And then now this note should sound better than it was because it's going to adhere to that bass a little bit more. Now this note, that went up to a uh, C sharp. So we could say up here on this octave, we could do the same thing. So we could go this, this note to C sharp. And this little accent, we could either leave it up there or get rid of it. 
but now this should sound even a little bit better, t you know, to mix in with our bass. Let's just listen. <laughs> So now we want that to go down. So what is this? That oh, these two notes aren't actually in the scale. So we could go to our bass. Let's go to our bass here for a second and grab these two notes. Double click, and they'll pop down to the to the note below that. So that's a G sharp. And so that's what we're going to do also with our guitar. So we'll take this to the G sharp up here. I can find it. So the G sharp, it was a G sharp. We moved it to the G. Yeah. So let's move that to the G. <laughs> up there now these this should work a little bit better now instead of it going up it's going to go down similar to how the bass is going to go down and we could drag that out too there's really no limit let's so that's starting to work there even though it's a little bit flat there a little bit we could move the format up and down on that maybe move it up a little bit now let's play the game. A little bit better, but I would mess around that with the transition and the formatting there, the, the format. And now let's go change that to timing and say we want this note to drag out longer to cover that transition there and just kind of drag out so let's try that. And that didn't work at all. And the format, format change didn't like that. So let's go and change that to lower. That's a little better, and then now we could drag this out, uh, the timing, and now try that to be dragged out a little bit more in the timing, and then hold down the Alt key to get more specific timing on that, and not only that, but we have so much control here, we could go to the um, this tool here and fade this, right? So now I could have this fade kind of out. Now let's go back and play again. And since that is not the right, try a different key on that. I would find the right key for that to end in. I'm thinking maybe the bass goes down to the G. It should sound good on the G. Not sure. Let's take it. find a key that I liked and then I would just continue on. Something within the key and the scale. Maybe that. So that is B minor. 
that's sounding a little better. So the point of this is saying that, you know, with the core track this powerful, you're picking audio bits from all over different categories. It could be from Easy Bass, it could be from, uh, you know, Scalers, you could pick some performances from Scalar. You could use any, really anything, uh, Remedy. You could use bits and pieces from Band in the Box, the orchestra. You could use U-Jam instruments, loops. Uh, really, you're, there's no end to what you could do and have them work together on the chord track here in uh, Melodyne. So from there, you can t say, okay, I want, you know, even some more guitar elements. So what used to be unusable, all, you know, many libraries that couldn't be used together, you can now get if you can't bring in the full performance, you can bring in, you may have to delete some of the performance because it doesn't fit on a performance level or whatnot. Maybe some of the, uh, the notes just, there's too, you know, there's too much information. Just delete some of that information. Use just the, some of the parts of that performance that work. Double click, bring them into line pitch wise and double click, bring them into a rhythm of what you're working in here and then determine what bits and pieces you want to keep and change and manipulate so in essence you you know you're able to open up so many different worlds of audio that weren't necessarily available even though you could do a lot of this in um, in something like Cubase to do it this quickly this precisely with the latest tools and a lot of them I haven't even gotten into here but it it's workable and doable even for uh, somebody who's musically minded and maybe not so technically minded. It's basically you drag in something, tell uh, Melodyne what is it, you know, it will automatically pick up what it is. But if you need to adjust it, you can readjust it and reanalyze it until you may start with something that's percussive, but it you may have to redetect it as something that has some pitch percussion in it. So you have all the tools to bring in any kind of audio and have it adhere to your workspace and grid that you've set up. So you have a lot of ways to work with the audio on this core track. Very powerful. Hope you enjoyed the little video today. Have a great day or evening wherever you are and we'll catch you on the next video.